Think of your regular camera as a clumsy cyclops. Having only one eye is a real drag. To him, everything is flat. He simply can't tell the difference between small and far away. But there's a better way. Stereo vision. Not that kind of stereo. This robot has stereo vision. These two eyes let him view a scene from two angles at once and form a 3D image. This can be demonstrated by holding a hand up to your face and closing one eye and then the other. As you do this, move your finger towards and then away from your face. You will see that as you move your finger closer, your finger jumps a bigger distance. Using this information, a 3D object can be generated. In a computer, this is done in three stages. Transformation, comparison, and generation. Cameras aren't perfect at capturing the world. They can have all sorts of distortion problems. Like fisheye. Or pincushion. This first stage corrects these problems by calibrating against a known pattern. The next stage makes life easier for the computer by transforming the view so that common features in the image are horizontal to one another. Next, the computer cuts small windows of the left image and then tries to match them on the right image. The distance the feature has moved when compared to its location in the left image is then calculated. The more it has moved, the closer it is. This is repeated all over the image and the resulting data creates what is called a disparity map. Now for the final stage. We take that disparity map and bring it into the 3D world. You can imagine it like a pop-up book where the bright pixels are brought to the front and the dark pixels are pushed to the back. But as good as this is, it doesn't quite match the real world as we have no idea of scale. Thankfully, the calibration in the first stage gives us the data needed to convert the 3D from pixels into meters. And there you have it, the three stages from image to 3D. Using these techniques, a 3D representation of the world around us can be created.